What the f So if you couldn't tell, this is the Clewiston sublot of all the flood and just generally Hurricane Ian damaged vehicles. You can see this is all like the heavy equipment out here. This guy told me to go all the way to the end to the left. I mean, that's, I hope that's what he meant. Just miles of cars and RVs, you can see that one's like wind damage. As far as the eye can see, Hurricane Ian was back in September. Okay, now we're in January and there's still this much stuff. And this is just the Clewiston sublot. Then you've got the Okeechobee sublot. Beautiful, untouched Florida out there. I need a yard this size for all the cars that I buy here to pick up gonna be a very very cool buy very very flooded as well pick it up an 06 coach builders dts convertible this is a thirty thousand dollar car clean title and they're very rare i got this thing for 900 bucks out the door I guess it came with free jumper cables. So right away, I noticed the fish tank here in the marker light. Now this one was flooded. You could see it when it came in, the rains washed it off now, I assume. The water line, you could really see it in the back, was, oh yeah, it's totally washed off now. It was like here was really high so they were you know several inches off but this thing is just full of mold as you can see Ugh. <laughs> try not to breathe that in so if you didn't figure it out already coach builders limited conversion on this dts sedan very rare very expensive to have it done when it was new and even to buy one used as i just did here except i did not pay the 30 ish thousand dollars this is worth i paid 900 out the door but again as i just showed you flooded up to here so i'm gonna get this strap down you can see it's pretty busy in here i don't want to be in the way and we'll take this down the street and we'll get a real good look at it Underneath, as you can see, pretty clean overall. Just some surface rust on the reinforcement work for the convertible. When they chop top these cars, they have to reinforce the unibody structure because otherwise the car would be very flimsy to say the least. But again, I mean, there's not much to look at with the interior here. It's just, it's junk. Everything is junk. The day I won this thing, I already started looking for a parts car, but so far all there's been is other flood DTS's, which I don't want another flood car for a parts car because of the electronics and just general interior stuff. I don't want a flood car parts car. It may take some time, unfortunately. They have to hold out for like a front end collision DTS. I'd like to find one that's rear ended. So I've got a good drivetrain if I need it and a good interior. That would be the best case scenario or one that's just smashed up down the side or whatever. You can see the way the convertible top design is, where they cut it, they did a nice job here, even carrying over like the cloth look on the lip of the windshield A pillar here. And these are fully electric tops. This entire car is gonna have to come apart. It's gonna be quite a project. It's not gonna happen overnight. 
We'll see how much I get done this weekend. I got other cars I bought this week. I got to kind of balance them all. Most of the flood cars I buy, really all the flood cars I've bought from Ian up to this point were below the dash flooded inside. So I was able to leave the dashboard in and obviously that's like the most annoying, difficult thing to pull. So I'm going to have to pull everything out of this interior, dashboard, seats, carpet, door panels, everything's got to come out. Safety disclaimer, some models may have been equipped with rear airbags with general motors. These airbags were permanently removed to facilitate the top structure mechanism. So what makes this a coach builder's conversion? Obviously the convertible, the reinforcing structurally, the other modifications that have to be made, like removing the B pillar in the case of this car, um, even the windows, it's all kinds of custom work that they do. And these parts are very valuable. Now I did notice when I picked this up, it's got a little bit of damage on the top. Uh, good luck getting a top for one of these. You can from the company that built these cars, but they're very expensive and it takes forever to get one. You could have a third party uh, top place, kind of look at what you got and replicate it to the best of their ability. But obviously it's better to get it from coach builders. They're still in business. They still build cars. They don't really care as much about their older units anymore. But if you throw in the right amount of money, I'm sure they'll make you a top. Now that's the only defect I could find on the top, a major defect I should say. I didn't see that in the pictures. I love how mint these caddy emblems are still. Although it's a little loose in there, but it's not discolored. I don't really buy these. I've had maybe two of these in my lifetime and they were just resale cars for me, but I don't normally buy these DTSs. I prefer the previous generation Caddy DeVille, which obviously they had a DTS version of, but 2000, 2005, that's my preference. I just don't like these bailout GM interiors are just crappy, but it's a gorgeous car. I guess I can't open the trunk. I'm sure there's an emergency release somewhere. It's not like, you know, an older Cadillac where there's a keyhole. What else is there to look at? Um, again, we know the interior, there's, there's pretty much nothing gonna be saved. Now, obviously the hard plastics are fine. Really, I mean, these door panels, all this stuff can be saved. The seats, probably not even worth the effort. Now I'm gonna have to save the rear seats because these are customly modified for coach builder cars. You can see they cut them a little bit, squeeze it. So this is the only seat that's got leather damage, but the mold, you know, it's gross. You wonder if you'll ever really get it all out. What else there is to uh, look at right now? I guess there's nothing else I can really show you guys. Oil looks surprisingly good. Undercarriage looks pretty good. Wheels and tires, nice. This is about what I expected it to be when I picked it up. I expected a lot more water in the oil. Not to say that there won't be, but I guarantee you there's not like six gallons of water in there. It'd be coming right up the dipstick. There's nowhere for it to go. Let me go ahead and uh, keep moving along here. I may go take a quick peek at Lake Okeechobee just over that big uh, seawall there, if you want to call it that. All right, I'm going to traverse this... Uh... Like I said, it's basically a seawall keeping Lake Okeechobee. They did this, I believe, after the great hurricane in 1926 because this lake flooded out all this agricultural area and uh, so they kind of built up a wall around it. You can see way down there, my two beautiful Cadillacs. I think I've got more Cadillacs than anything else now. Okay, this is just the, um, here's canals that run all along. Lake Okeechobee. You can see the lake itself way out there. So not that great of a view right here. Okay, so I got in last night. It was dark. Didn't really feel like working on the car in the dark. But then I made a mistake. So if you haven't seen it already, I did a big whoopsie on the driver's door of this otherwise dirty but perfect condition car. These scratches, you can see this one, all of them, except for this one here. This is actually indented a bit too. A little bit of body filler is going to be needed here, or maybe even a little bit of PDR would uh, be okay. But you can see 
I really did a number on the store. So what happened was, and these things happen, it seems like they happen to me more than anybody else, but I guess I'm dealing with so many cars so often that they're just gonna, these things will happen more often. So I pulled in here last night, and when I initially pulled in, I thought I pulled in tight enough to the driveway that I left room for me to get to the back of the property with other vehicles or get out with other vehicles. And I didn't. For me to drive down with the truck and trailer, there's no way for me to turn around. I had one option, which was to back up, which with a dolly, you know how that goes, <laughs> not well. See, this used to be it's like a wheel well over the dolly tire. The deck pivots on this and this could hit the car. I was getting frustrated at this point. It's the fourth time I'm trying to get this thing in tighter. We were trying to go somewhere and take one of the cars in the back. And so I kept backing up, backing up to the point where I really couldn't see the car anymore because I guess it was really like pivoting over here, the dolly. Came back here and I found that this was here, pushed against the door. Anyways, with that out of the way, let's move on to the vehicle. So what I want to do today is I first want to get this interior as stripped out and clean as possible. Oh, you can actually see the water line here, which again, I knew where it was, but Here's another showing of it right here. And even here on this door panel, I wanna get this interior stripped out as much as possible. And that way it makes it just a little more livable when I'm working inside this vehicle. Tune back in here in a minute when I've made some progress. Okay, just a little update. So I got the back seats out really quickly. That was no trouble at all. The bottom just pops out so you can access the battery, so they make it easy to take out. And then this one, you can see you have to reach behind with a flathead screwdriver and push these tabs, and that releases the seat. The driver's seat was all the way back, and I couldn't get to the two T50 Torx bolts that hold it in. There's one here. There's one there, and the front, it just hooks in. I'll take the mask off for a minute. It's like a workout trying to talk in that thing. So I had to get a little destructive. Just remember, these seats are getting replaced. There's just, when a seat gets this soiled with mold and water and rust, there's no saving it. There's no point. I'm going to have to buy a parts car anyway. Um, reason being, and I, I knew this was going to be the case. I mean, the fuse box... The connectors, obviously I'll try to clean connectors so I don't have to be crimping or soldering connectors on everywhere, but this stuff is all junk, right? So it's getting replaced. I don't mind being destructive on the seat. So the reason I had to do that was to get this seat up and out of the way. The passenger seat, I'll have to do the same thing essentially. Okay, so this seat went a lot quicker because I knew what to do from that side. And this seat, I did not have to move up nearly as much. It was almost all the way up. And this one wasn't stuck like the other side was. I'm actually able to turn these gears here without breaking these apart. I had to on that side, it wouldn't budge. But this side's not as bad, so take a look. This is what I do. Just turn it. And as I spin that, it's moving this forward and I have to do the same on that side jump back and forth but I mean I just started spinning this side maybe a minute ago and I'm already almost clear to take out the T50 there and the T50 there should be done with this seat in a few minutes and then it's on to the center console and the carpet not too much longer later honestly taking that second seat out after having done the first and also it wasn't seized up the uh the cables inside the power seat motors like the driver's seat was that one came out really quick center consoles just four 10 millimeter bolts comes right out and a plug uh, that seat came right out as i said and i took off all the other little trim bits Whoo! look at that is anybody really surprised this is definitely the worst flood car I've ever bought in terms of how filthy it is. It was just a really, really salty flood. And if I had to guess, this thing might have been in a parking garage and the mold was just able to really 
grow. So you saw that carpet's gonna be a bear to get out soaking wet. The good news is that it looks like a two-piece carpet. So this section and this section. Again, because it's just me here, I'm gonna do it off camera, but it should only take me a couple minutes. I'm gonna put my mask back on too. As soon as I lift that carpet up, you can smell. Uh, it's not a great smell, but gonna get the carpet out. I'm gonna get these door panels off. I'm not sure, it's 4.30 now, I got a couple hours of daylight, but I got a lot done today, I'm not done yet. My goal is this weekend, really, to just get this thing as clean as possible, get as much salt out of it as possible, then start hunting for a parts car. So let me get that carpet out, but you can see just the pile of, this is all going in the trash. Obviously, some of these plastic bits are fine, I'll keep them. Some of them broke because they were just so rusted in. I think this was, this is the driver's seat. I was able to get this out okay, but the passenger side one, wherever it is in this mess, that uh, you can see it broke. It was just the rusted clip was so stuck. And again, I know I'm gonna be buying a parts car, so I'm not being super, super careful. I just wanna get this interior out. Okay, so a few minutes later, I've got the carpet out and I just wanna mention something. I do need to save this seat back here because it's customly altered to fit in the coach builder's car. So here's Parts Mountain. It actually smells worse over here than it does over here. And here's what she looks like with the carpet out. So you can see, woo wee, it still doesn't smell too great in here, but there really isn't any mold left in here, at least that I can see. Gonna need a new, this is why I need a parts car, like this airbag module is obviously, I'm pretty sure these are watertight, but I wouldn't even play around with that. I would just change it whatever the heck this is, um, <laughs> pretty much everything. I mean, the wiring harness, uh, I don't know, depending on how hard that is to change, I may just swap it over. If, it's, if I have the dashboard out and it's pretty accessible, it's not too much of a headache and I may just change it. If it's gonna be a headache, I'll clean the connectors. There was uh, one wire on this one here, you could see it popped out. Uh, when I was trying to get this, these were just fused together, both of the seat connectors, because you see how many pins there are. You can see I had to just break all the plastic and get a screwdriver and to pull this out. I'm sure a lot of you are looking at this just saying, Al, you're crazy. Why are you even wasting your time? You just got to remember what kind of car this is. Coach Builders Limited. And some of you might say, well, why don't you just get another clean car and swap all this over to it? Uh, because I'm not the one to be cutting roofs and reinforcing undercarriages it's all been done on this car it's a coach builders limited car i mean they do all this but i'm not going to build my own coach builders car i'd much rather just work with this chassis but i've shop vac all that standing water out i'm going to pull all these plugs out of the floor in a little bit i'm going to pressure wash the hell out of this interior i want to get the door panels off too like i said oh Here's the owner's manual, still wet. <laughs> Just like my white Elante, if you saw that video. The water was up in the glove box on that car, too. Crestview Cadillac in Ohio. Yeah, this is sad to see. No reusing that, obviously. We'll get to a certain point on this, and I'm going to have to just push it aside and wait until I get a parts car. All right, let me get back to work. Okay, so a short time later, I've gotten to a pretty good point here. I've got the door panels, and they have this... I guess it's either a moisture barrier or a sound barrier or both. Uh, those were a little tedious to take out. I don't know if this is Coach Builders Limited. You have to give them credit where due. They're taking something that was never meant to be and making it something else, right? They're making a convertible on a sedan, but both sides have this bungee cord. I have no idea why. I don't want to touch it. I mean, there's all kinds of weird, I don't know what of this is GM. This was that really bad era of GM quality. I mean, these door panels were atrociously bad. They were cracking as I was pulling them off and I was using a trim tool and being careful. It's just this era of GM. The, the cars were really poorly built. Not the mechanical aspect, most of them were still great, but you know, everybody makes fun of GM interiors. Most GM interiors don't deserve that criticism. But this era of GM absolutely deserves it. C6 Corvettes, these DTSs, the GMT 900 trucks, Cobalts, all those cars have horrible interiors, horrible quality stuff. You can see the reason I wanted to take these off is so I can wash out inside the doors. 
Some of you may not like the idea of that, but that's how I really get these flood cars clean. Remember, this has already been underwater with salt water, so spraying it with water again is not going to make anything worse. And you might say, oh, won't that just activate the salt again? Well, you got to wash it multiple times, obviously, but the only way you're ever going to get this vehicle clean is by just hitting it with a pressure washer. You can see I popped out two body plugs just so... You know, water is continuing to drain out. The car's at an angle. There's going to be little pockets where water gets stuck, but I'll come in with the shop vac afterwards and clean that out. Okay, so I did the first pass. Well, pretty aggressive because we got nothing to lose on this thing with how dirty and salty everything was. I'm gonna have to pressure clean it several more times, spray in some degreaser to kind of agitate and see in there, for example. That's just all salt film inside that door that even the pressure didn't take off. So a degreaser or something that's gonna loosen all that up. And you can see though, I mean, well, you probably, you might not see it, but I see it in person. It looks a lot better already. A lot of this was just rust staining that comes off. Now all these bubbles, this happens at just about every flood car, fresh or salt. Just all that moisture being trapped on top of this thin layer of paint they put on the floor of these cars. You know, the moisture sitting there for that long eventually ends up causing it to bubble. The, it actually ends up soaking through the paint to the metal. So on this side, I started to uh, just, as I was running the vacuum through here, just kind of scraping with the nozzle of the vacuum, which was taking off anything that was really loose. This side I haven't done yet. And then obviously I'd have to come in here later. I'll come in here later on with a wire brush or a wire wheel and just really clean all this up. And then I'll paint it with a rust inhibiting paint that will not only protect this metal it'll also stop any rust in its tracks so probably this whole floor i'll end up painting in here and so i use that to reach through here now you can't see right now because i pulled that up by accident but i reached all the way through to the back you see that yet neon safety release there with just a couple of tries i was able to pull that and pop the trunk open now i could just try putting power to this thing but i mean just look at this fuse box <laughs> it doesn't it doesn't inspire a lot of confidence and maybe it'd be kind of cool to see if any of this works, but honestly, I don't even want to waste my time. I'm just gonna end up replacing this fuse box, obviously. Anyways, I figured we'd take our first look together at whatever there is to find in the trunk. I have not looked in here yet. You can kind of see right now. See the old water line? You can see like the salty film. I haven't washed the exterior yet. I did wash all the doors out. I already talked about that. All right, here we go. I like this Cadillac uh, rubber mat here. It's a nice touch. Go ahead and take that out. It's a rubber mat with a carpeted bottom, which kind of sucks, but uh, whatever. That will clean up just fine. We'll put it in the pile, as V-Core would say. Do I dare even pull this out? <laughs> oh man, that's funny. Probably just take that out of my parts car if it's the same color. So what happens with a trunk like this, sometimes it'll retain water. This one didn't. Either it just dried out from the amount of time. You can see our water line again in here, pretty much at the top of the trunk. Either it'll dry out from time or 
it'll leak out through a body plug that maybe isn't seated all the way. Now, normally these DTSs and even Anthony's DeVille, if you haven't seen the video, like I said, go check it out on his channel of his uh, Coach Builder's fire car. Normally that would be back here. Normally there'd be like a package shelf back here on a sedan. And since Coach Builders modifies the car for the convertible top to go there, they build their own subwoofer box and move it back here. It's very rudimentary construction. I am gonna probably, I'm gonna need this box. Granted, I could probably build my own just as they did, but you can see right there. Hopefully I can get this bolt out, this thing to twist out for the spare tire. A lot of times these will get rusted in solid. See, I'm just, well, I don't know actually. Okay, this one might be all right. It's getting looser because I'd like to pull all the carpet out of here tonight and hose this out as well. Another umbrella. It seems like all these coach builders cars are owned by golfers. Just fits the demographic in the pile. We've got a uh, Polar Revolution hat. We've got golf tees. I envy these retired folks. Would love to golf all day long, all week long. The guy I bought the um, Trofeo convertible from yesterday or two days ago it was uh he golfs like three days a week i had to work around meeting him on his golf schedule when he was free god i wish that was all i had to do <laughs> but the crap that i do i'm not even sure i'll make it to that age that's why i try to wear the respirator and stuff and play it safe i don't think i'm invincible anymore like i did when i was a teenager all right Good, this is gonna come out. A lot of flood cars, that ends up being seized. And you just have to cut it with a grinder or something. The trunk doesn't smell that bad. And again, I guess it's probably been airing out since I opened this thing up. I know the trunk on uh, the Elante, Randy's Elante, the red one. If you haven't seen that video, go check out Auto Auction Rebuilds channel. If you haven't seen those videos, where have you been? Gotta support your boy, Big Al. All right, give me a minute. I got a lot of little trim pieces and things I have to pop out. These are gonna have to come out to get this carpet out. All right, quick clip. My phone battery's gonna die. Just wanted to show you guys, I stripped out all the trunk carpet. There was a lot of Coach Builders Limited's work, which was just a bunch of self-tapping screws holding in their customly modified trunk carpet. And apparently that's Coach Builders Limited uh, Gorilla Tape. Now, I'm just, you know, I'm joking around. It may sound like I'm really knocking these guys, but you know what? I couldn't do any better of a job building a car like this. These hoses you see here are drains for the, around the top so water doesn't pool up. I haven't sprayed out this trunk yet. I'm going to in a minute. You can see where they relocate the subwoofer. There's all kinds of uh, wire here and this little thing here. So whatever that's for, some sort of audio equipment. And you could also see, clear as day, the water line, the trunk. You see that there? So the water, you can see just how high it was. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna spray this. I already popped out one of the uh, body plugs there so that the water will drain out as I spray it. Okay, so I washed out the trunk. I'm gonna have to do this several times in this car, really wash it out with some soap or degreaser, but this is just the first pass. And like I told you, trying to get some of those bubbles out of the paint here on the floor, but looks a heck of a lot better already. And the next thing I wanna do before I wash underneath in the body, because everything, including my dolly, is gonna be wet, is I wanna change the oil. We'll see how much water comes out, but I've undone the Torx bolts here for the air filter box. I haven't looked at it yet. I figure we look at it together. Three, two, one. Huh? That's... It's a pleasant surprise. I didn't expect to see that. It's, it appears that it never got maybe just a tad bit wet on the corner. You see that? I thought that was going to look much, much worse. You can tell that water got in here. 
but I don't think it actually went up into the intake. I'll pull this off some more to really check for sure. I mean, this is sand here. So that would, tell you, that would make you think that water was here and the water line on the rest of the vehicle would make you think that it was here, but this definitely doesn't look too bad. Interesting. Well, here's something else we can check actually. This uh, fuse box right here. Come on, baby. Uh, I don't know, that's a hard call. Definitely looks better than the other one, but let me see. Pull out a couple of relays. That will tell me right away. You dog. Ugh. I thought I got lucky. I'm going to need both fuse boxes, which again, buying a parts car, no big deal. I'm going to have all that, but I was hoping. So, you know, the water had to be at least up to like here, right? And it got up from underneath the fuse box. The top of it looks pretty clean, all things considered. As soon as I hear that little crack noise like that and that squeaking, that's how I know there's corrosion in these relays. Oh, yeah. This got swamped, too. I mean, based on the water line that I had seen, I figured this whole engine was underwater. So that's why I'm surprised that the dipstick looks as clean as it does. Take a look for yourself. It's not to say that there's not crap in there, but it looks really, really clean. Even there, you can just see some oil. All right, a little oil puddled up there. Doesn't look like it has any water contamination. So that's good. And it looks like it was a well-maintained engine based on just how clean it is in there. Even the bottom of the oil cap here. Well, let me keep taking this apart. I want to see, you can usually tell right in the throttle body if there was water that got in. So let me go ahead and undo that screw there and we'll see what we see.